Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This is one of the shorter review videos that I'm doing. You know, not the full length, very thorough kind of review videos and you'll find out why when I talk about this spinner. So, featuring the Millennium Spinner by Ray Zhang of ZL Studio. Now, uh, next thing I want to mention is I'm sorry if it's kind of dark on this side because I think one of my little lights, uh, not that the lights were spoiled but the batteries kind of died. So I need to buy new batteries for it because it's like a rechargeable USB charged battery thing and it's one of these crappy little batteries over here and I think this one's dead. I don't know why, I don't know what happened but yeah, it's dead. So I got to get myself, I guess, a pair of better quality 18650 batteries, I suppose. So I do apologize, but I hope that this light over here will suffice, at least for this review. Very quickly, we're moving on to the box over here. And there was a sneak preview that I kind of showed you guys in my spinner dinner video when I was out with Azri, Marcus, and Jong Un. And I actually kind of teased this box. So it's a normal looking cardboard box, but what makes a difference is this sticker over here. And it's got a nice quote here. I took the one less travel by, and that has made all the difference. The road not taken by Mu Xing, which is a uh, wooden heart. I don't know if there's anyone in particular called Mu Sing, but yeah, it's by wooden heart. So, Zero Line Studio. So, now we all know what ZL Studio stands for. ZL Studio stands for Zero Line Studio. That's really cool. Then, that's the logo. So, this is the Millennium Spinner. We have a authenticity card here and we have also one of these pouches as well as a bearing retention tool and a spare bearing. And this is a 688 bearing. Now this bearing and the one inside are different. I'll get to that in a while. So we'll just put the box aside. And the reason why this is a quick review is because this really is a collector's piece. Now I've already been fidgeting with it. I've been messing with it and it's been in my collection box for a while now. So I kind of know the nuances of it. But the reason why I'm not going into details is because, well, the moment you look at it, you know that it's not a, you know, very fun fidgeter, in my opinion. But it is made of stainless steel and just as the name suggests, the Millennium Spinner, it looks like the Millennium Falcon of Star Wars. Now, I know the Millennium Falcon actually just one side like that, right? Kind of like that. But this, you know, in order to make things a bit more equal and more even on both sides, you know, Ray was making a spinner after all. Wait, this is kind of distracting. Ray was making a spinner after all. So in order to give it a good spin quality, you got to make it symmetrical, right? So here we are, symmetrical. And spin is pretty good, actually. It's a very, very smooth spin. But... It's not as satisfying as heavier spinners simply because the arms out here are very, very light. Most of the weight is focused on the inside. So it does feel a bit hefty, but you don't really get that kind of a strong resonance and feedback from the spin. It actually spins just like a light spinner. You know what I mean? Like it feels heavy, but the way that it spins and the speed that it gets is almost akin to a lighter spinner. That's uh, just one thing I wanted to point out to you guys. Kind of like what Hobby Timmy said about the Compoform Hydra. It's the same thing, right? So as you can see, it comes with a pouch with very nice buttons, I must say. Like, look at the detailing on the buttons. And it's made of leather with a very nice stamped ZL Studio logo. And we just open it up. I'll show you how the spinner fits just right there. And I like the fact that this button over here, yes, it is exposed on the inside, which is unfortunate, but it actually sits right above where the button is. So very minimal, very little contact with the spinner because that's where the actual concave of the button is right there. Just make sure that you kind of lift up this flap so that you know that button wouldn't be rubbing against the body of your spinner and then you just close it down like that. Pretty nice touch to go along with this very unique, very exquisite kind of spinner. Now let's talk about the detail on the spinner itself. See, these are what they call the power lines. Okay, but they, I guess they're just more of detailing than anything else. And they only are available on one side. The other side is just smooth all the way. So some of you might actually like the spinner this side. This is like super reflective as you guys can see. Super mirror finished and it's such a fingerprint magnet. But on this side though, you actually get different finishes on the spinner itself. So you have a, I don't know what this is like, a blasted kind of finish, like a satin bead blasted finish on the detailed arms on the side and then you have a mirror polish finish on the outside and on the outer edges this is a machine finish and then you have a very smooth mirror polish finish here as well so it's very interesting because it features a few different finishes on a single spinner frame which is very nice and the buttons if you look carefully they are detailed differently on either side the one with the zl studio logo in the middle features a smooth outer ring but the one without the zl studio logo has these i don't even want to call them notches but like this detailing kind of milled out and you can see it's milled because there's still a surface milling over there so i'm gonna just twist it open and show you guys the bearing retention system and that's the reason why you actually have a bearing removal tool so pop it straight out and in here is a stainless steel bearing. But the extra one here, as you guys can see, it's kind of 
darker in color. This is the hybrid ceramic bearing. Yep. So you're going to use that tool, put it in, twist it. And the fact that this tool is rounded, kind of like a guitar pick, that also reduces the chance of any sharp edges actually scratching the surface of the spinner, which is a good touch. So good job to Ray over at ZL Studio. I like it. So that's the bearing retention method. And spin times are pretty decent, but not that fantastic. I'm getting about one and a half minutes, two minutes table spins. And yes, even a nice shape like this. Oh, I just realized I changed the button sides. Well, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, as I was saying, even a spinner design like this can still get you table spins. Look, it's spinning completely fine. I know it's a little bit dusty. That's because of all this fuzz coming out of the leather. But yes, table spins works as well. Very quickly moving on to the size comparison with a stubby and obviously much taller and wider than a stubby. So that's the size comparison with a stubby. Now, last but not least, I'm going to talk about the fidgetability of this guy. It's actually quite an okay fidgeter. It might take a little bit getting used to because these edges here, they are not sharp. In fact, there is a very, very slight chamfer and I mean slight, really, really slight chamfer out here on the arms or the cockpit. <laughs> I mean, the original Millennium Falcon actually has a little cockpit on the side over here. I mean, those of you who are Star Wars fans, you guys know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite a Star Wars fan. I mean, I'm not a huge fan, but I like it. Yeah, I really enjoy Star Wars. I grew up watching it and I've never missed an episode so far. I uh, never played the games, I uh, never really read the books, but always watch the movies and uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I enjoy Star Wars a lot. I'm sorry guys, I failed to mention that there are trit slots. These are 1.5mm by 6mm trit slots. You actually have only two, so only on the upper two with the details, yeah? Once again, I was talking about fidgetability. It might take a little bit of getting used to because if you want to flick it from here, the middle part, you know, almost like a disc shaped spinner, you're gonna have your flicking finger a little bit further away from the button itself because of this main diameter here. But when you get it up here, because of this particular area over here, it's a little bit easier to flick versus a standard disc shaped spinner. Now, when you're performing preloaded flicks, I like performing preloaded flicks with my middle finger and ring finger because of the way it's set up and it's kind of far away from the button. So I usually do this instead. So just two fingers instead of one. It gives me a little bit more grip and it gives me a more, I guess, satisfying kind of preload flick like that. And when I change up the grip to a middle finger and thumb grip, pulling back and pushing forward with your index finger is okay. If you hit it up here, you kind of slip every once in a while. But if you manage to get it on the edge like that, the outer edge or the outer arm, let's just call it an arm because it's a spinner, okay? The outer arm, then no problem at all. Not as satisfying as if you were to perform flicks with your fourth finger or your middle finger, in my opinion, in my opinion. So I'm just being brutally honest, guys. I've never really enjoyed any of the ZL Studio spinners that I've tried so far. The Twin Star, the Dorado, and even the Millennium Spinner. It's not really a spinner that I really enjoy. I don't know what it is about the ZL Studio spinners. Maybe it's just me because, you know, I see a lot of people enjoying the Twin Stars, but it's just not for me. It just... I, I don't know, like I've been tagged by Asri and someone said that the best way, I think it was Megan Mullins maybe, that the best way to fidget with your twin star is to have the arm on the outside and then you perform preloaded flicks like that. And for me, yeah, that was the only way to fidget with it, but I didn't like the fact that it felt so rickety all the time. I didn't like the fact that it wasn't very nice to fidget with, with other different grips, with other fidgeting styles. So. It's just my opinion, you know what I mean? But the reason why I'm enjoying this Millennium Spinner so much, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit more of the detail. It's not because it was given to me. It's not because it was a gift to me from Ray. It was kind of like a thank you gift because I've been reviewing his videos. So shout outs to you, Ray. Uh, I really appreciate this gift. But the reason why I like it is because it is a Star Wars themed spinner. I love Star Wars, guys. I really, really enjoy Star Wars. And to have a Millennium Falcon themed spinner is just awesome to me. Like... I'll be honest with you guys, okay? This costs $108.99. I don't know why it's so specific, $108.99. I'm just gonna round it up and say it's $110. Now for $110, this is pretty pricey. But, and this is really honest guys, for $110, I would put that money down for this. Simply because it is a Star Wars theme design. You know what I mean? Like really, it's just the fandom getting to me. So any of you out there, who really appreciate machining like this. Look at how nice these marks are and appreciate Star Wars. I don't know if you guys are gonna want to get this, but for me as a Star Wars fan, this, this is worthy. I know that there are other Star Wars themed spinners out there. Like I think the Ergo, I forgot what it's called, 
It's not the ergo. What is that? The people who make the ergo. What, what are they called? Ultra spin Yeah, Ultra Spinners. Yeah, Ultra Spinners actually has a Star Wars attachment, I think, for the modulator spinner. And to me, that's cool. But it does look a little bit clunky. Very big middle portion and very puny looking TIE fighter wings. <laughs> but in my opinion, this one actually pretty cool. Something that, you know, would actually feel more like a spinner versus that modulator. So uh, I really enjoy this a lot. And yes, like once again, I will say I would put $110 down for this, even though it is not the best filter, even though it is not the cheapest, even though it doesn't really perfectly look like the Millennium Falcon, but this spinner is named the Millennium Spinner and very clearly, Ray wanted to design a Millennium Falcon themed or Millennium Falcon styled spinner from Star Wars and uh, that's actually reason enough for me to want to put that $110 down for this. So if you guys really are fans of this, you know, and you really want a collector's piece, like I said, again, this is a collector's piece. Make sure you get yourself one of these. I don't know when the next run of this will be up. I don't even know if there will be a next run because I've seen some people actually receive that Millennium Spinner so far. But as always, guys, I'll put links in the video description below to the One Stop Fidget Big Cartel web store. And uh, if there's going to be a drop soon, then, you know, get it. And the only way for you to really find out if there's going to be a drop is to follow them on their WordPress site as well as their Facebook page. And you'll find links all in the video description as well. And that's it, guys. That's what I really wanted to share in this video. Now, I wanted to show off this Millennium Spinner to you guys and also to say thanks to Ray for sending this to me. I really, really enjoy this because it looks great. And I'm really happy with this as a collector's piece. So, <laughs> that's all. Um, short review. Really, that's it. Thanks guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next slice of my life. Bye!